drug discovery. You're yeah. already working with Sanofi and UCSF. Can you use the models, the equations of quantum physics that the greats gave us a century ago to help me help you help everybody find the specific drug that's going to work for them? Yeah. So this is a critical, critical challenge. As we all know, uh, eight to 10 years on average preclinical work before you get a mo molecule into phase one uh, trials. It's, it's insane, by the way. Insane. The amount of time crazy. and money. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Uh, and, and then you get into trials. As we all know, you got to do phase one, phase two, phase three. And what is the percentage of failure in these trials as we're moving through all phases? The answer we talked about last time, 90% failure, 90% mm. failure. I mean, what other industry works this way? If you and I have the construction industry, the Peter and Jack, <laughs> uh, wonderful construction industry, we're going to uh, build people, hotels and buildings. We said, hi, by the way, 90% chance it's going to fall down in 30 days. <laughs> But please use us. Use the construction industry, uh, and we'll and we'll charge we'll charge you billions per building. Billions that, by the way, you can't recoup. Okay, yes. but anyway, I mean, no other industry works with these kind of failure rates, and that's why that ten percent success that actually gets out to market, the pharma companies have to charge so much for it because it's got to pay for the ninety percent of failure. People are like, "Why is everything so expensive?" It's because of this core dynamic. The dynamic is broken. In and the I want to remind people, even after the FDA has approved this drug and you're buying it at a sometimes hundreds of dollars per, per pill, sometimes thousands of dollars per injection, it still doesn't work for everybody it's you know, prescribed to. The success rate per individual is in the order of 10, 20, 30 percent because it has to be just good enough for the FDA to give its approvals and not do harm. Doesn't guarantee it's actually going to work. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So again, people are doing their best under the current dynamic. Um, I actually believe that, you know, biopharma companies are one of the most positive things on this planet and that they're trying their best, but they don't have the right tools. Mm. And so what we realize at Sandbox AQ is we can actually build that tool. We can build software that would embody the molecular dynamics, the actual equations that under that help us understand whether this molecule would fit into that target in the body. And that means, yes, it means going down to that electron level, just like people watch movies where they shrink themselves down. Uh, <laughs> not really possible, but anyway, it's a movie, it's fun. But uh, we have to, in our minds, get ourselves down to that electron level because that valence electron, that outer electron on that edge of that atom, of that molecule that we call it a treatment, it's got to lock in, like lock and key, into one of the electrons uh, that is on the outer edge of the receptor, and there's got to be binding. If there's no binding, we're not going to have efficacy. And oh, by the way, if we also start binding to other things, what we call off-target effects, that is things we don't want to bind to, we could have toxic side effects. And so we've got to look at both. We've got yes. to check what it is going to bind to that we want it to bind to and what's going to bind to that we don't want it to bind to. And so this becomes a very complicated set of equations and calculations. And the conventional wisdom, Peter, was if we go back, roll back seven, seven, six, seven years, oh, this is not possible on conventional computers. This is not possible. And you, you won't be able to do this. In fact, fast forward, what we've shown is actually we can do it. Uh, it, it, it was a lot of collaboration uh, with folks who are designing chips at Alphabet. And then, of course, now with NVIDIA, we've announced several times uh, various partnerships with NVIDIA that allowed us, allowed us to expand uh, the CUDA uh, language that is inside, embedded inside the chip, and give ourselves the ability to go into this large quantitative models, quantitative AI that embodies with it the ability to calculate the quantum equations on a scale basis, use that as a generated data set. So people talk about what data drives your AI model. And normally what they're thinking of in their head is what data from the outside world drives your model. In the case of large language models, that is all the words on the internet. They just mm -hmm. suck Reddit and suck in X and Instagram uh, posts and things like that and social media comments. And that becomes their data set. And here we're actually generating the data set, Peter, from the equations themselves. Because so, they don't exist out there. They can't be found on the internet. You need to create right. the data set and interpolate from there. That's right. Exactly right. Yeah. So that allows us 
to have this big leap forward. We're now already with real molecules for uh, you know, various neurodegenerative diseases from UCSF, a Nobel Prize winning laboratory. Uh, we've been able to really help them refine the molecules that they started with and help them cut the time, cut the cost, and uh, get them into clinic much, much faster. And so this is a very, very exciting moment uh, in the history of humanity, and our ability to create treatments. And when we think about the number of approved drugs every year, um, listeners may think that hundreds or thousands of new drugs are approved a year. In fact, it's on average about 48 to 50 new uh, drugs a year approved. And most of those, three quarters of those, Peter, are not first in human drugs. They're me too drugs mm -hmm. where somebody has a variation on a theme. And so there's only about a dozen or so first in human novel drugs approved a year for the world.